Today we're going to talk about families of quadratic function. So a family of quadratic functions share one or more characteristics in common, just like you and your family. The first example we're going to do, we, we want to talk about two parabolas and they're both in this family. So when we look at this equation, see the a is a parameter that is left unknown for us. Every parabola in this family has to have some things in common, but it won't be the a value. So we won't know the stretch factor. We won't know if it opens up or down. But the other things that two, the other characteristics that two parabolas would have in that family, would, they would have the same x-intercepts or the same zeros. If you look at the question, at the original here, they're going to have an x-intercept. They have to have one when x equals negative 1 and when x equals 5. So two parabolas would have to have that. So let me just do a little sketch here. One, uh, negative 1, let's say it's there, and 5 is there. So this could be one parabola in that family, but another parabola in that family might be like this. But they're said to be in the same family because they share some characteristics, and in this case they share the x-intercepts. What other characteristic would they share in common? Well, they would have to have the same axis of symmetry because the x-intercepts are the same. Same axis of symmetry. Let me just draw a little dotted line there. Axis of symmetry, of course, is halfway between your zeros. So they would have the same axis of symmetry. What else would they have in common? Would they have anything else? So the direction of the opening, we don't know. Stretch factor, we don't know. The vertex, no, they wouldn't have the same vertex. So for now, those are, those are two characteristics that um, those parabolas that are in that family would share. Next question, what would you do? So for this question, what we're gonna talk about is just um, what would you do? We're not actually going to finish the question, what would you do? What would you do to, to determine the equation of the parabola with a vertex at negative one five and it passes through to negative 22? So you have a question in your homework and it says, how do you get the equation? How would you determine the equation? So first of all, I would choose which form I want. Remember, we have three forms, standard form, vertex form, and factored form. Since we're given the vertex, I would start with vertex form. And with the vertex form, I would sub in the vertex. So let me write that out. Start with vertex form. So I would have y equals a x minus, and I'm going to, let me write it out, x minus d squared plus c. So instead of d and c though, I'm going to erase that d and c and I'm going to change it, I'll change the sign as well, to x plus 1 x and a plus 5 there. So that would be the first step. Start with the vertex. Then how do we find the a value? Well then we would sub in our point which is 2, negative 22, and remember the 2 goes in for x, negative 22 goes in for y, to find a. And the question doesn't say state your answer in any specific form, so we can just use vertex form. The next question says, what would you do to determine the equation of the parabola with x-intercepts 1, negative 3, and f at negative 1 equals 8. So what would we do to determine the equation of that parabola? So again, you want to think of your three forms. You're going to start with vertex form, factor form, or standard form. Since we are given the x-intercepts, we would start with factored form this time. Start with factored form. And the factored form looks like this y equals, or you could put f at x, let's put f at x there, f at x equals, again, a value, and we're using factored form, so that's x minus, and diff depending on what you did in grade 10, you might have used an s or a t or an r and a t, it doesn't really matter. I'll use x minus t, r and t here. 
those are my x-intercepts um, there we go so I'm going to start with factor form but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase that R and that T or whatever letters you put and I'm going to put in its place my x-intercepts one is a one and the other is a negative three so the negative three is going to change that sign to a positive three there's my factor form now what's my next step so I have one more clue in the question I have f at negative one equals eight so that means my negative one is the x my eight is a y so it's the same step two as I had before. I'm going to sub in a point. Sub in negative one eight in for x and y to find a. Now, what if you're given an equation? Uh, sorry, you have to find the equation, but you're given a table of values this time. And your table of values shows several coordinates, including the zeros. So what are you going to do? Same, we're going to start off the same way, which is should which of our three forms should we use? Since we've given the zeros in the table, we will start with factored form again. And this, this example that I've given you, I haven't actually told you that she given you the table or the zeros, but we'll start with factored form. Start with factor form, and factor form is y equals or f at x equals a x minus, and use um, the letters you had. Maybe you had s and r last year, whatever the letters were. So you would sub in for the zeros. You would put the zeros in here, like we did in this question above. Then once you have that, since you have a table of values, you can pick any other point, whatever point you like. Pick in, not the zeros, but pick any other point and sub in for x and y. x, y, sub in like that, and then you'll find a. So let's scroll down here and look at example two. A car skids in an accident. The investigating police officer knows that the distance a car skids depends on the speed of the car just before the brakes are applied. So we've got a chart already with speed. This is the speed of the car along the top and the bottom is the length of the skid in meters. And there's a direct relationship. There is a relationship between speed and length of skid. That's how, that's how the uh, investigating officers figure that out. They know that there's a connection. We're going to create a scatter plot of the data in the table and then we're going to draw a curve of good fit in there and be careful to choose a good scale for your grid. So what's going to be my x and what's going to be my y? Usually when you're given a table, whatever is on the first part of the table is usually your independent. So speed is independent and the length of the skid depends on your speed. So that's definitely your dependent variable. If I look at my values, my speed value is zero. They're counting by tens all the way up to 100. So along my x-axis here, which actually I'm going to label as speed, speed in kilometers per hour. Let's see if we can count by tens and fit 100 on there. I'm not going to crowd it all in though. I'm actually going to just skip and write every second one just so that I uh, make sure it's legible for you guys there. I don't think I could fit it all in nicely. And there's 100, no problem. You could even get up a little further, 120. Now our y-axis at the top here, that's actually our length of skid. So let me write that on here. That's our length. I'm gonna I'm kind of running out of room there, but that is in meters. So we have to get from zero to 71.4. So what can I count by here? I am going to have to count by tens again. We can't condense the graph. We can't put that little zigzag thing at the bottom because we have to include all the numbers and we have to get zero and 0 0.7 in there. So I can't just ignore part of the graph. All right, so let's graph it. Put, I'm going to 
I'm going to press pause and put all my dots on and I suggest you do the same. Just press pause here and finish your graph. This, And then I'll have it finished and I'll come back and we can check. So there are my coordinates from the table. And we're estimating, it's pretty hard to get, for example, 10 and 0.7. That's, that's not 0.7, but it's pretty hard to get those on there. But we can see the shape here. The next part is to draw a curve of good fit. So a curve of good fit doesn't mean I'm going to try and hit. This is not connect the dots. I'm not just going to try and draw little straight bits in between each dot so that they connect. I want a curve here and my curve may or may not hit all the dots, but that's what we're going to try to draw here. And we're going to extend it beyond this last point because certainly it's possible for cars to be going faster than 100 kilometers an hour. So we're going to put an arrow up here but no arrow at zero, zero at the origin because we can't go any less than that. So there's part A done. Part B says determine an equation of the curve of good fit. Assume there is only one zero located at the origin. So which form is best to use? And this is what I stressed above in our questions above, always what form do you want to use? We have to decide that first. So since we have one zero located at the origin, we could use factor form or vertex form. If we use factor form, we would just be using zero twice. If we use vertex form, we're going to be using zero, zero. So let's just do vertex form. I'm going to start with y equals a x minus d squared plus c. And I'm going to sub in the vertex. And it would also be OK instead of the vertex form to use factored form. Squared, it's minus or plus there, it doesn't matter. Let me actually erase that and leave it a minus. Okay, so now I can clean that up a little bit and that is y equals a and then that's just x squared. And you would have got that if you used factor form as well. So how do we find a? Well, remember up here, pick any other point from our table and sub it in. So pick a different point, whatever point you like best and sub it in. Let me just pick a random point here. I'm going to pick this one. So I'm going to sub in for my x, for my y. Let me move it up here. My y is a 6.4 and a, I don't know that, but my x is a 30. So we're going to simplify that. That uh, 30, 30 squared is 900. So I'm going to put the 900 in front. 900 a, we divide both sides by 900 and we get 0 0.007 and then one repeating. So I'm just going to round it to that equals my a value. So what is the equation of the curve of good fit? So my final equation is, and I'm actually going to change it here. Instead of x and y, I'm going to use the, the letters that are in the question. So um, instead of y, let's say length as a function of speed is equal to 0 0.0071 and instead of x I use s for speed squared. So there is a possible equation and when you have tables especially with decimals you might get a number that's different than everyone else did for a but they should all be similar. The last thing for this question and the last question we're going to do says state any restrictions on the domain and range of your model. Restrictions on domain and range. Let's talk about the domain first. The domain are the x values. These ones here for speed. So for a question like this, you're going to use some common sense. What are reasonable values for speed? Well, for sure for the domain. Um, now, depending on, in my question, I changed it to S. You could use S here. If you left X in your question, you would leave it an X. Uh, well, let me, so you could use X or S here. So I will start with S is an element of real numbers because uh, whatever speed you're traveling, you can go from one speed to another speed by going through every variation of that number. For example, from 50 kilometers an hour to 51 kilometers an hour, you, you pass through 50.1, 50.2, 50, and all decimals, all fractions. We have speed is an element of real numbers such that we do have a low number. Our low number is a zero. Zero is less than or equal to S. And what are we going to put for our maximum speed here? So this is where we just ask a class, ask the students, what would you say for maximum speed of a car? 
um, that, you know, let's be realistic here. And um, let's say we say 160 kilometers, that's pretty fast. 160 kilometers an hour, fine. I would accept that for your answer. 500 kilometers an hour, I would not accept. So this is our domain. This is our restriction on the domain. And how about the range? So for the range, our range I used L for length of the skid. The length of the skid is also an element of real numbers. Distance always is such that we have a low value, which is zero. Now, how do I know what to put in for my high value here? Well, for this, I have to, I have to look at the number I picked for my maximum domain. I picked 160. So I need to actually work this out. I need to find out if I'm saying the maximum speed a car is going to go is 160 kilometers per hour, then what is the maximum skid I will be seeing? 0071160 squared. So I have to work this out. So you get out your calculator and look at your answer and see if it's reasonable. I think it's reasonable, 181.76, something like that. That's the maximum length we're getting for a skid in meters. So I'm gonna put that in here, 181.76. So the upper limit of my range depends on the upper limit of my domain. And in this question, I had to kind of determine that on my own. That is our lesson on families of quadratic functions, very similar to things you've done before. So it's really kind of a review of a lot of the work that you know from quadratics.